According to the Center for Disease Control, there are 20 people per minute who experience physical violence by an intimate partner. So there's something called the power and control wheel that I like to reference. The power and control wheel, it really talks about in a relationship, um, the abuser is trying to gain that power and control. And there's many facets that goes into that power and control. They don't necessarily, it doesn't start with abuse. Um, physical abuse. It usually gears up to physical abuse. So it might be using intimidation, it might be using coercions and threats, it might be using technology in some way. Um, so all of these will then, and it's a cycle, so it will continue. So um, really when we look at dating and domestic violence, it's much more than verbal or physical. It, it can also be a lot of emotional stress as well. It's very hard to get out of a domestic violence relationship. Abusers really create environments for their victims um, that seem almost impossible to escape. More than a third of women and a quarter of men have experienced rape, physical violence, or stalking at one point in their life. One in five, 20 percent of women are going to experience sexual assault in college. 28 percent of transgender and 35 percent of bisexual women are assaulted in college. Interestingly, warning signs look a lot like uh, normal relationships in movies, right? So there are things like jealousy. Um, they say that jealousy is the number one predictor of violence in the future. So um, if you have somebody who is always looking for your whereabouts, um, they don't let you have friends, um, they're isolating you from people that you care about, or they're just kind of always wanting to be with you and only you, then you can pretty much be sure that they are are ready to abuse you at some point. There are a variety of um, ways that people experience abuse and so some of the violence could be more physically, um, more physical that's what ha what is happening or um, verbal abuse and a lot of threats that end up turning into that physical abuse so it really varies. Uh, some specific things are people being pushed, being shoved, um, falling down the stairs is what they'll say sometimes, but really being pushed and, and having broken bones, all of that kind of stuff. In 2015, Cabrini received a grant from the Justice Department's Office on Violence Against Women to enhance victim services and develop programs to prevent, investigate, and pr respond to sexual assault and domestic violence on campus. Tommy Wilkins was hired as the grant coordinator for Cabrini. If you're a victim of domestic violence, you can report it to public safety. That's your go-to first move. If you, if that is not because of the trauma of the situation and the first person you tell is your RA, if you live on campus, or if you're a commuter, you can go to Student Life. But you should start with public safety. Um, once you go to public safety, they will then contact Mary Andrews, who is our investigator and educator on campus. So she has a history of working with police departments and the DA investigating crimes in the past. Once she does her investigation, she will then pass it on to the Dean of Students, Dr. Stroud, who will then look into if what occurred, did it violate any of our sexual codes of conduct? And were any of those issues, were there any problems there? If so, then it would look, out, look into what is going to be the penalty for the perpetrator. And there's a long list of things that can happen. In over half of the reported incidents of rape, the victim reported that he or she was under the influence of drugs or alcohol, or thought that the offender was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. But when it's a sexual assault or domestic violence, it is viewed as a separate issue. So you don't, a person should not come forward because in the midst of the situation I was drinking, or I was doing whatever that goes against the policies and procedures and conduct of Cabrini. Seek help, get help. We will deal with that. That will not be an issue. If you've been sexually assaulted, the people you're going to talk to are your roommates or your friends or your family. You're going to talk to them before you talk to the police, before you talk to school officials. So what that does is that drives home how important it is for us to make sure that students, friends, family all know what to do if someone discloses to them that they're a victim. The bystanders can, knowing that, that the victim doesn't always see that it's happening and they're in the midst of it and that they are, they, they know it's wrong, but like this person apologizes, so they'll do better, they think it's their fault. Bystanders, one, realizing that and knowing that, okay, I need to be your friend. I need to be supportive of you. And one first and foremost thing I say to bystanders and friends is you can't spend a lot of time downing 
the perpetrator. You can't constantly saying they're horrible, they're stupid, they would kill you, I don't like them, I don't want to be in the same room with them. Because by doing that, you're forcing the victim to defend the abuser. The saddest thing about abuse is that the person does know you intimately. So they do know what operates you, what you, what you operate as. So it's really easy for them to, to kind of find a way in to hurt you. In the beginning um, of orientation, they do have, um, I, I think it's called Real Talk, where they separate the guys and the girls and they talk to them about sexual uh, misconduct, they talk to them about dating violence. We also have a number of programs through our uh, diversity office. They have done a number of programs. We've also done a lot through um, uh, our domestic violence symposium that we run every October. Also a number of faculty. We have a lot of different um, classes that talk about these themes. Um, and, and discuss ways in which we can uh, look at this from a social justice perspective. Furthermore, I know that um, health services and we have our counseling center, all of these services on campus are here to help students and also to educate us about uh, dating and domestic violence as well as sexual assault. For the last 10 years on campus, I've taught a course called Dating and Domestic Violence, which basically uh, trains peers how to address their friends who have been in domestic violence relationships. So a lot of times when people are in abusive relationships, they don't go to their teachers, they go to their best friends. So the idea is to have students learn about how you manage a friend who's um, experiencing a violent relationship. Um, so every semester that I teach the class, um, I find at least five to six students who have been victims of domestic violence in their own relationships. Um, who are kind of looking for the classroom as a way to sort out the issues they're having. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a really important space to do that um, because the isolation factor, of thinking you're the only one it's happened to or it only happens to stupid people or dumb people, couldn't be farther from the truth. This happens to everyone across the spectrum, right? So there's no way that you can prevent or there's no personality type that's more mm -hmm. susceptible. There's no um, ethnic or socioeconomic class that's more susceptible. Abuse is equal opportunity, unfortunately. If you would like to learn more about ways you can help take action against domestic violence and sexual assault, please visit www.nomore.org.